You know, there's many ways to hunt deer and be successful. You can stand hunt, you can stalk, some places you can hunt with dogs, some places you can hunt over bait. Uh, you can even drive around in a pickup. You know, no matter what way you decide to deer hunt, they all have their advantages and disadvantages. You know, it's your hunt, you can hunt any way you want to. I think more importantly, it's the why as opposed to how. You know, it's why you hunt as opposed to how you hunt. But you know, there's one way to hunt that really lights my fire. And when I'm successful at it, it's when I feel the most gracious and satisfied. And that one way is deer tracking. So I want to explain the real reasons why I love to deer track. And well, there's multiple reasons. I think there's five reasons that came to mind. So the first thing that I love about tracking deer is the adventure it presents. When I get out on a deer track, I never know what's gonna happen and I never know where I'm gonna end up. I love the unknown, I love the mystical part about it. It's an excellent way to observe deer behavior from rubs, scrapes, bedding, how they interact with other deer. You get to observe a lot of other wildlife. You come across so many other things when you're tracking deer. In deer tracking, it's like a puzzle. You're trying to figure out what the deer is doing. Sometimes you ask yourself why he's doing it. And then you're trying to predict what he's gonna do next. What's his next step? What's he gonna do next? You know, and, and while you're tracking deer, it's a great time to discover new territory. You never know where you're gonna end up. I don't know how many beaver bogs and places to fish that we've discovered while tracking deer. Other good places to hunt. You find pockets of deer here and there. Uh, kind of learn about deer behavior in that region. Kind of guide you to future hunts. Kind of gives you more places to look for deer. Uh, the following year. You kind of go back to those areas that you've tracked here through before. So it brings you into new territory. But regardless of what transpires throughout the day on your adventure deer tracking, at the end of the day you have a great story. You always come back to camp with some experience or something interesting to share with the other guys. So the second reason I love to deer track is the physical and mental challenge of it. You know, like a lot of things in life, if you've ever done anything that was truly challenging, that truly tested your, your limits, and you were successful at it, it feels so much better. I feel so satisfied when I shoot a deer tracking, as opposed to just kind of waiting to randomly have one show up and have chance be more of a dictator of my success uh, than me actually putting in the effort. But you know, like most things in life, you get to believe you can do it. It's a challenge, and I think a lot of people cut themselves short. They stop way before they should. Um, they say, I can't, way before they should. Um, a lot of times it's right between the ears. If you think you can do it, and you're committed to doing it, man, it's a game changer. Uh, you can do it. And, and tracking, you know, there's a lot of discomfort at times. If I take pleasure in that discomfort, if I change my mindset, it's a game changer. It really allows me to be able to push myself a little bit harder, a little bit further. You'd be surprised on how far your body can actually go. Uh, you know, your flesh will scream out, I don't like this, this is difficult, this hurts, it burns. If you focus on the discomfort, you're screwed. So the third reason why I love to deer track is I can pretty much always guarantee there's a deer in front of me. So right, when I find a deer track and I'm tracking it, I mean, I know 100% that a deer made those tracks, he's in front of me. You know, deer densities are so low in Northern Maine. Um, I can pretty much, if we have snow, I can pretty much guarantee I'm gonna be in a deer. I may not see him and I may not get a crack at him, but I'll be into some deer, and that's huge. And you can come across deer crossings, even, even in Northern Maine where the deer densities are low, you'll see where deer consistently cross. But you could sit there all season long and never have a buck walk across during daylight hours. I've had cameras on some of these crossings where you drive up, it looks like it's beat right down. It looks like so many deer are crossing. So you put a camera up there and it sits there the entire season and there has not been one buck that crosses that crossing during the daytime. So you could have sat there every day of that season, spent every day sitting there from morning until night and never shot a deer. I mean, that's kind of daunting. So for me, tracking deer in an area like Northern Maine with low deer densities, I can pretty much guarantee I'm gonna be into deer. And that's huge. The fourth reason, is it's therapeutic. There are not many things in life that I feel I'm present in the moment. For me, when I'm tracking a deer, it's like everything else stops. All worries are gone. I don't think about a thing other than that moment and, and what's going on. And you know, maybe for other people, maybe you can relate there's something else that you do that makes you present in the moment. Uh, but for me, deer tracking, man, it's, oh, it, just, it gets me fired up. It, it, it just gets me in this zone that I, I can't really get in anywhere else. So with all the concerns in life and all the things to worry about, uh, deer tracking kind of hits reset, kind of helps me to kind of just dump all this stuff, hit reset, um, and that's what deer tracking's like for me. It's therapeutic, it's my therapy. 
So the fifth and final reason that I can think of why I love beer tracking so much, um, why it's so important to me, uh, is the tradition of it. You know, obviously deer tracking is a regional thing. It requires snow um, for the most part. Growing up in the Northeast, it was a common tactic that a lot of people used to deer hunt, was to go out and find a deer track. And I grew up doing that as a kid. I followed my father around in the woods tracking deer and there was something about the whole process of getting up early in the morning, checking buck tracks, just checking tracks after tracks after track, trying to get an idea of how fresh it is, trying to age it, the size of the deer, where it's going, and then knowing your area, maybe it's going into an area that there's a road on the backside, so you can scoot around on the backside, see if that deer crossed there, and it's kind of like a big game, it's a big puzzle that you're trying to figure out, and you're trying to increase your probability of getting that deer by making the best decisions. And you've got a lot of choices you can make throughout the day that can make or break your hunt. It just gets me so excited when I see a big buck track crossing the road. You know, you kind of walk up the bank, get an idea how big it is, how fresh it is, where it might be going, what his plan is. You know, so it's, it's just a big, it's a big game. And, and it's a lot of fun. So for me, as I've mentioned before, deer hunting as a whole is about the whole process as opposed to harvesting a deer. I like everything that goes into deer hunting and deer tracking, there's a process that's involved that I grew up doing, and that to me is what deer hunting is in the Northeast. There's many ways to be a successful deer hunter, um, and there's many ways that people hunt, and I'm not saying that there's a right way or a wrong way. Um, I think we all have our own way that we like to do things. Um, I think it's more importantly to hunt your way. Some people have different traditions that kind of light their fire, and uh, you know, that's cool. I can recall explicitly a time specifically in my life when I knew that deer tracking was the way that I needed to hunt. That particular season was really cold. Um, I believe one morning it was minus 18. We had a lot of snow early and the deer were headed into the yards. So we were seeing a lot of deer. And I can recall I was sitting on stand, freezing my butt off, staring down an old road that you couldn't drive. And I remember thinking, is this how I really want to spend my vacation? Like just staring it into nothingness. I believe it was Thanksgiving day. Oh God, it was brutally cold. I had a spike horn walk out in front of me and I shot the deer. And I don't want to say that I felt guilty, but I just, I wasn't, I wasn't thrilled. I walked up to the deer and I looked at it and it was a small spike horn. And I just remember, at the time I thought it was the fact I shot a spike horn. And after the years have gone by, I realized it really had little to do with the deer and more to do about the whole the situation as a whole because um, I've shot spike horns since that I was more than tickled to shoot them uh, but it was situational it, it was relative to the situation at hand and I recall looking at the deer and at the time I said to myself I'm like I'll never shoot another spike horn this is the last spike horn I'll ever shoot since then I realized that it wasn't actually the deer that I harvested it was more about the whole process that went into harvesting the deer so it's multifaceted it's not just the deer that you shoot but it's the process that goes into it. That's the main reason for me that I love tracking deer in Northern Maine. So until next time, get outside. It's good for the soul. See ya.